Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We have a reasonable idea about the future of Tesla's autos. We have Texas and Berlin on the way, and Model 2 will hopefully make an appearance next year. But it's hard to judge Tesla's energy business. Due to such a scarce supply of batteries, they've been allocated to the auto business. I believe Tesla make more profit per kilowatt hour of batteries sold in a car than they make for energy storage. But with the 4680 batteries making huge progress, perhaps there will actually be enough batteries left over for Tesla to start stepping up the energy storage business now. So obviously the batteries themselves do not produce energy. So how do they increase electricity supply to consumers? The issue of producing energy is that supply needs to meet demand. It can take a whole day or so to get a coal power plant up and running to start producing energy, meaning you can't just simply turn it off and on when demand is high during the peak hours. There are solutions we have currently, such as peaker plants, combined cycle gas turbine plants with multiple cycles, pump storage hydroelectricity. But of course, if we're planning on moving to renewable energy sources, then we can't make the wind blow harder and we can't make the sun shine brighter during peak demand. So we need to even out supply and demand. Battery storage will be the ideal solution for this. Whenever there is abundant energy from wind or solar, it will be stored in batteries. And whenever there is more demand for energy than being created, the electricity will come from the battery storage facilities. Of course, we're not 100% renewable yet, but the same principles apply for fossil fuels and can help even out supply and demand and will require less power plants as a result, resulting in less fossil fuels being burned and electricity prices costing less. I believe that new vehicle factories will be able to support their own batteries with their independent battery factories on site. It makes the most sense. Why make something somewhere and ship it somewhere else? Tesla is all about finding ways to cut costs and vertical integration. This is the best way to do it, so that's what they'll do. China gets enough batteries from CATL to support the majority of manufacturing there, and the rest is supplied by their other local partners. Fremont has enough batteries from Giga Nevada. Now it appears that Tesla are looking at building an energy storage facility in Texas, at the size of about 100 megawatts, enough to power approximately 20,000 homes. It's unclear as to how many megawatt hours that will be, but when the world's largest battery in South Australia was built, it was 129 megawatt hours and 100 megawatts. So perhaps Texas will be around 129 megawatt hours as well. The initial capital cost of the first day to Australia was Australian $90 million, which at that stage was around 65 million US. And in around three years, that saved consumers over 150 million Australian dollars, or around US $110 million, or about $35 million a year, which is a return of about 50% a year obviously amazing. All I could find out was that the battery type was lithium iron, but I don't believe this was lithium iron phosphate or LFP. Anyway, even if it was, with Tesla's new 4680 iron cathode batteries, and with all the other technological advancements they've made since 2017, there have been significant improvements in price and efficiencies. Let's work with price per 100 megawatt hour battery to make things simple. So if it costs $65 million for a 129 megawatt hour battery, then that would have ended up being about $50 million for 100 megawatt hour battery equivalent for the Australian battery price back then. So how much would these energy storage batteries actually cost Tesla now? Guessing the improvements from battery day and the fact that they will be using iron cathode batteries, I'm going to guess that the cost of these batteries are down to $60 per kilowatt hour at the cell level. And if not now, I'm sure they can't be that far off soon. So a 100 megawatt hour battery would cost Tesla approximately six million dollars. Then there are the other costs such as land, connecting to the grid, labor, shipping, insulation, other parts and expenses that may be another 14 million dollars perhaps, giving a total cost of about 20 million dollars. These are just guesses and I would have thought on the more conservative side and I also would have thought the batteries would be the majority of the cost, but let's run with 20 million dollars. So if Tesla is selling a hundred megawatt hour battery at around 50 million dollars, and it's costing them 20 million, then that's a profit of $30 million per battery, or $300 per kilowatt hour. And if Tesla are able to allocate just 10 gigawatt hours a year to battery storage, that would be a gross profit of $3 billion a year. Tesla's battery in Australia has saved consumers about US $30 million a year since it's been introduced. However, despite so many homes in Australia having solar on their roofs, and there being such an abundant source of sun and coal, Electricity prices in Australia are actually very high, and Adelaide, which is in South Australia, actually used to suffer from blackouts, although I'm not sure if they still do after Tesla's battery. 
as it can get so hot in Australia, everyone wants to use their air conditioning at the same time. So battery storage is an ideal solution to level out demand. So those savings would come to approximately 150% return a year going by Australian power prices and the price per battery. Despite some nations having more expensive electricity prices than others, Tesla isn't likely to charge different nations different prices for energy storage batteries because their electricity is more expensive. For example, Australia's energy prices are 70% higher than America, so obviously energy storage is that much more valuable in Australia. But there are other large countries with high energy costs too, like UK, Italy, Japan, Spain, France, or even Germany where it's the highest. So I would have thought it might make sense for Tesla to position their energy storage in these countries to start with, as they'll be more profitable. So this is one way Tesla could profit from their battery storage. But given the savings are such a good return for the consumer, perhaps Tesla will simply sell the energy back to the consumers. Buy the energy when it's cheap and sell it back when it's high. Given that consumers save $35 million a year, then perhaps Tesla pass on half the savings to consumers and take the other half as profit. In other words, if it costs Tesla $20 million to set up a battery, and then it passes 17.5 million a year savings to consumers and receives 17.5 million a year in profit, then it's a better income model and more preferable to shareholders. However, it's not really the consumers that Tesla want to be taking money from, it's the energy companies. They want to cut the energy companies out. Well, at least the fossil fuel companies. In comes Autobidder. Autobidder is the equivalent of Tesla's robo-taxis for their energy. It's where the real money is. And like robo-taxis, Tesla's customers, or the citizens of a nation, get to make income. They're able to generate their own energy and feed it back into the grid. Not only that, in combination with their power wall and possibly vehicle battery, they're able to store energy from the grid when power is cheap and then sell it back to the grid when power is more expensive, thus further leveling out supply and demand. You see, although most of residential customers pay consistent energy prices for every kilowatt hour they consume, the actual electricity prices fluctuate all day long with something called electricity spot prices. Tesla's auto builder software will be highly advanced. It might even use Tesla's Dojo AI computer to help calculate all the buying and selling of electricity prices. But basically, if the grid has too much electricity and needs to unload some, it might sell a kilowatt hour for perhaps five cents. You may even get an alert from your Tesla app saying, cheap energy prices, plug your vehicle into your power wall and feed back to the grid. Then when the grid is in short supply and high demand, the spot price might go to $1 per kilowatt hour and then your app will notify you to plug your car in and let the grid take the energy from your power wall to earn money. Of course, it would be sensible to just leave your vehicle plugged into the power wall and let Autobidder do its thing, and you'd have a setting saying, don't go below 40% charge on your vehicle or something. So this would give extra incentives for consumers to purchase power walls and solar, as not only would it save them money on their electricity bills, it actually brings them decent income too. Currently, when you sell your energy back to the grid, they give you next to nothing compared to what they charge you. This will all change, and the income will be taken from the fossil fuel burning power companies and given back to the people. Of course, Tesla receive a cut on every kilowatt hour bought and sold through the auto bidder network, just like they'll take a cut on any robo taxis. So this will be huge. Yes, there is regulation to get around in most countries in order to achieve this. However, if I recall, Germany and the UK are actually possibly already able to use a system like this, the way their grid is set up. Given that these countries have a reasonable population and high electricity prices, it makes sense to start there. Tesla have already registered an electricity utility in the UK. Why weren't Tesla doing this before if it's so profitable? Well, they need to scale them up and it takes a lot of batteries. And the cost was higher before and they could sell a 60 kilowatt hour battery and make $10,000 profit on a car. Also, I believe Tesla are doing everything they can to get their robo taxi fleet ready and using large amounts of batteries and energy storage would simply delay that. Robo taxis are the biggest money maker still even with order bidder implemented. But I think Australia was simply a test to get out there and learn how it works and what it can do and how profitable it is and put Tesla on the map as an energy company. But now the cost of batteries will come down significantly and Tesla aim to reach 10 terawatt hours a year of batteries by 2030, just for energy. Although Elon says it's likely this will happen before then. But let's do some quick maths. 10 terawatt hours a year equates to 100,000 100 megawatt hour battery mega packs a year. In our first pricing model for Tesla selling batteries directly to third parties, they would profit $30 million per pack. That would equate to $3 trillion gross profit a year. In the consumer saving model, taking 50% of consumer savings as profit 
e.g. $35 million, saved a year, Tesla would take $17.5 million per battery pack. But this was with high energy prices, so perhaps it might average globally closer to $10 million a year, which would equate to $1 trillion gross profit a year. But this would of course be accumulative, as in every year they sell another 10 terawatt hours of batteries, Tesla's gross profit increases a further $1 trillion a year. And then there'll be the auto bidder software model. Now, in all honesty, I can't even begin to speculate on how much that could make, but we will presume it will be even higher than the consumer saving model. Eventually, there'll be enough battery packs for the world, and therefore Tesla's customer demand would dry up, and no one won't test the batteries anymore. Sure, they would recycle the old ones, but this income is pale in comparison to selling the batteries. And I would say these energy storage batteries will last for some time. In other words, it would not make sense to sell these batteries as a one-off to third parties. Tesla will want to own and control the batteries for themselves to receive continual income, whether through selling discounted power, but most likely through the auto bidder software. Anyway, this side of the business looks very exciting and I look forward to hearing more about it soon. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.